together. For the Lord is good, isn't he? The Lord is great. And a good God and a great God deserves good and great praise. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. That just means bless your back, God, for blessing me first. Hallelujah. Amen. Word time in the house. Respect, reverence, recognition for the word of God. Yeah. Folks stand for a lot, amen, but they sitting down even on the national anthem now, y'all. But Judge Judy, Judge Brown, Judge Mathis come in the courtroom, they jump up and stand. They say the Pledge of Allegiance, they jump up and stand. President Obama come in the room, they jump up and stand. I don't always know what that do for folk, but you know what I do know? You can take this with you and give it to your neighbor. Just tell them, when we stand for the word of God, the God of the word will stand for us, amen. This is my Bible, holding it in my hand. Got it hid in my heart. Excited, ecstatic, and expecting today. Today is my day. Knowing that after I hear the word, receive the word, believe the word, and it's when I do, the word tell me to do. My life, never the same. The word of God strengthens me every time I get weak. The word of God sustains me through everything I go through. The word of God supplies even more than I need. For the word of God saving me right now shall save me from now on. Because I know after hearing the word, receiving the word, believing the word, and doing, and doing, and doing what the word tell me to do. Not only my life, but my circumstance, my situation, even my condition. They will never, ever, ever, I will never, 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 never will I be the same. Never will it be the same. Never the same. In Jesus' name, you believe it, amen, and receive it. Give God the right now praise. Come on for the right now blessing, the right now blessing. Maybe not everybody, but anybody in this house know that you know that the Lord is blessing you right here. Come on, tell somebody the Lord is blessing me right now. I'm at his house right now. He at my house right now. I'm in Monday right, Sunday right now. But he's already in my Monday right now, amen. Baby, I'm just getting into September, but right now he in October, November, December, waiting for me in the new year in January. Three times right now, right now, right And the right now blessing. Tell your neighbor it always deserves a right now. The Gospel of St. John, y'all, come on. You have to roll and run with this one, amen. John chapter 12. Okay. John's Gospel, chapter 12. Amen. Peruse down to about verse number nine, the ninth verse. Hallelujah. Verse 9, chapter 12, John. This is what it says. It says, much people of the Jews therefore knew that he, Jesus, was there. They knew Jesus was in the house. Are you with me? And they came not, though, just for Jesus' sake only, <laughs> but that they might see Lazarus also, because it was he whom he, Jesus, had raised from the dead. They knew Jesus was in the house, but they didn't just come to church today to see Jesus. Some folk heard about you were going to be up in here, and they had heard about all the stuff you had been going through, all that you had been dealing with, all that you had been facing, and all that the Lord had delivered and brought you through. And they didn't just come to church today to see Jesus. Some folk up in here because they want to see. 
But the chief priests consulted. Now listen to this. Listen to this. They consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. They didn't just want to kill Jesus. But somebody wanted to kill you, amen. <laughs> Why? Because that by reason, that by reason of him, because reason of Lazarus, many of the Jews went away that day and they believed on Jesus. A reason to believe. A reason to believe. When folk are looking at you and me and what God is doing to us and through us, they ought to get a reason. A reason, come on, sit down, reason to believe. We, we, we've been in this portion and passage of scripture for past six, seven weeks to going on, month and a half, two months, and the reason God continues and contains us here. This portion and passage coming out of 11 and a 12, it has the potential possibility of pregnancy. Amen. The potential possibility of pregnancy, and that means what Aaron shouts out, you, you embrace this passage and portion, you might give birth to something, amen. Because embracing this portion and passage of scripture, amen, the potential possibility of pregnancy is that it has that potential to birth and bring blessings into your life. This passage here, if you embrace it, it has the potential to bring the manifestation and materialization of miracles, amen. Y'all have to pray with me, amen. Because everybody in here may not need a blessing to be birthed and brought in their life. Some folk have settled for the status quo, Kesara, Sara, whatever it's going to be, S-O-S, same-O, same-O. But somebody in the situation you're in, you need the manifestation as well as the materialization of a miracle, amen. Not just talking about this thing. How many of y'all start want to walk into this thing? Okay, amen. And the reason, amen, amen, the text talks about to believe because blessings and miracles are the results of believing, amen. Blessings and miracles are the results of having faith in God. Amen, Pastor Green. Blessings and miracles, they do not happen if you don't believe. Read throughout the Bible and you'll see the folk who received blessings and miracles. They were blessed and miracles materialized and manifested because they believed. Amen. The blessing in our life, the material things in our, I mean, the, 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 the amen, manifestation of the miracles in our life, they don't just happen because we're going through things and we need some sympathy. They don't just happen because we've been coming to church since we were children out of servitude, amen. Come on here, been here a long time, amen. They don't even come because we've gotten up in age and, and we're, we face seniority, amen. Blessings and miracles, they manifest because we have been standing and taking God at his word, amen. Come on, come on. I'll preach about it anyway, amen. Amen. We, 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 we're in this election year now. Y'all do know what's going on around here. And in this election year, this election year, it is different from the election years from 100 to 150 years ago. Amen. Because in this election year that's coming up, if it comes up, the number of non-believers are outnumbering the number of believers for the first time in the last 100 to 150 years. Amen. Listen to me, people of God. There are going to be more non-believers voting that are registered to vote this time around than there are believers that have been voting every other turn around. Amen. What does that mean, Pastor Green? What does that mean? That means, amen, that folk who have no religious affiliation, not only do they not believe in our God, they don't believe in no God. In fact, for many of them, they think they, they own God. Amen. And they can do what they want, choose what they want, live like, y'all got to hear me this morning, amen, live like they want, are y'all with me? 
amen, because when we look at this, amen, it used to be, amen, not like that because it used to be to, amen, receive and to be respected, amen, and to be regarded, you had to step out and tell folk you were a believer, amen. Come on here, amen. Somebody would tell them, I am a believer. I'm a Christian. I'm a Catholic. I'm a Lutheran. I'm a Methodist. I'm an Episcopalian. I'm a Pentecostal. I'm a Protestant. I'm something, but I want everybody to know I am a believer. It ain't like that now, y'all. Because throughout this whole election time, and as time winds down to election day, have you heard anybody confess they believe in Jesus? Come on, come on. Hmm. I ain't heard none of the candidates say, I'm a Christian. I didn't hear nobody step out and say, we ought to stand for the word of, are, are y'all still here, amen? Amen. And, and, and you ain't heard nobody say, I believe, amen. Haven't heard nobody say that, amen. And the positions and the platforms, talk to me somebody, amen, are ambiguous. I don't know what these folks stand for. Because they stand for one thing one day, and they don't flip the script by the next day. And now as we get closer to election day, they say one thing in the morning and they say something else at night. Okay, y'all ain't talking to me yet. Y'all got to pray with me, amen. I, I don't know what they stand for. They keep flipping and they keep flopping. They keep going back and forth and it ain't clear which way any of them are going. And it's dangerous to have people in positions of power, amen, who can't make up their mind where they stand, amen. Here's the word, y'all. A double-minded person is unstable in what all of them Y'all got to preach with me, amen. And there is trouble on the horizon. You can touch your neighbor and say, there's trouble on the horizon, amen. People of God, you got to hear me, amen. This election year, there is trouble on the horizon because, amen, the measures and methods, amen, the rules and regulations, the laws and legislation, amen, the, the oppositions and the propositions, amen, they will be predominantly determined by folk who have no religion just affiliation nor no relation to God at all amen he's preaching in this house there's trouble on the horizon amen and if you and I as the people of God as believers if we gonna make a difference because you do know that's why God got us here right now right to make a difference amen come on you need to tell somebody God got us here to make a difference amen if we gonna make a difference in our homes, in our families, in the community, in the city, in the country, if we gonna make a difference in this world, it's not gonna be what and who we choose to vote for in a booth. It's gonna be because of who we stood for in the book, amen. I better back that up and run it again. If we're going to make a difference as the people of God, as the church of God, as believers, it ain't going to be because of who we chose in the book booth. It's going to be because of what we stood on in God's book, amen. Because as we stand on the word of God, I don't care who in the White House, as long as God is still on the throne as his house, you and I need to know everything going to be all Y'all looking a little worried out there, amen. The difference will not be because, amen, a Democrat, a Republican, an Independent, or somebody of the Green Party, we took them at their word. It's going to be because we took God at his word, amen. It will not be because we put our faith in Trump or put our faith in Hillary. It's going to be because we put our faith in God, amen. Are y'all still with me, amen? And if we have faith in God, we may look like we're in the minority, amen. Man, because this ain't the first time we've been outnumbered. Am I right about it? They were outnumbered going into the lion's den. They were outnumbered going into the fiery furnace. Amen. Jehoshaphat was outnumbered three to one. Amen. But somebody stood up and said, if God be for us, if God be with us, who, what, when, and where can be against us? Amen. I stop by to tell you, if God is still on the throne, his promises are 
does feel true. The devil is a liar. Lay your hands on yourself because greater is he that's in you and me than anybody out here. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord. We've been walking in this passage. Y'all want me to get excited. I ain't going to do that today. We've been walking in this passage and on this path through John 11 and 12 and we saw Lazarus sick. We saw Lazarus die. And we saw Lazarus buried. And then, somebody say, and then, Jesus showed up. He didn't show up while he was sick. He didn't show up after he died. He waited four days till after he was buried. But then Jesus showed up. And when Jesus showed up, he raised Lazarus back up. Amen. Y'all don't want to shout this morning. Okay. I said when he showed up, that's when he raised Lazarus back up. Amen. Which meant, amen, when Jesus showed up, he showed up with resurrection power. He showed up with restoration power. He showed up with return power. Now, this ain't for everybody, but it is, Leilani, for somebody who's been counted out, who's been rolled off, who has been put down and kicked to the curve, amen. I feel that your time of resurrection is here right now. I feel your time of restoration is right now, amen. I feel there's a great return double for all of your trouble coming right now, amen. They have given the benediction, they have sprinkled the dead flowers, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, amen. They have given up on you and Jesus is calling you by name this morning, amen. He's calling you, amen, to get back up again, amen. Everything you lost, amen, he's restoring it back to you, amen. So now look for your house to come back. Look for that car to come back. Look for your children to come back. Look for your health to come back, amen. Look for everything that's been taken from you to be resurrected, to be restored. Somebody Shout it out. It's coming back in a return. <laughs> Hallelujah. The text says, after all of that, Jesus went to the house of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, cooked him this big dinner. Word got out in town. Jesus was in the house. But then the text says they didn't just come to the house to see Jesus, but they wanted to see Lazarus. Because yeah. Lazarus had been sick, Lazarus had died, and Lazarus had been buried. Are y'all still with me? He was dead, y'all. Come on, he wasn't in a coma. He was dead, amen. He wasn't in a little spoon, amen. No, he was dead, amen. Dead as a door now, Grandma. Okay. He was dead. But he had been resurrected. He had been restored. He had returned back to his. Mm. And it says, by reason of him, many folk believed because Lazarus gave the folk a reason to believe. He gave them a reason to believe. They had looked at Lazarus and they had to shake their head because they knew he had been sick. They had gotten the word he had died. They heard that he had been dead and now the Lord had come and what resurrected the boy, restored him, and helped him to return back to his way of living. Are y'all still with me, amen? And you know what they said? I'm looking at my own situation, and it ain't that bad. I'm looking at some of y'all. Y'all ain't shook your head all morning. You ain't said, thank you, Jesus, all morning. We hopping, skipping, and jumping around here. You like you got Velcro on your back, and you can't move, amen. And the Lord told me to tell you whatever you're facing, whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're going through, whatever you're experiencing, look at somebody say, it ain't that bad, amen. 
it, it ain't that bad. Are y'all with me? I, I'm looking around at some other folk, what they got to deal with and what they gone through and what, come on, baby, you didn't have to dig nobody out the rubble of an earthquake. It ain't that bad, amen. Come on, you ain't been washed out of house and home, amen, and got to start all over from scratch. It ain't that bad. Am I right about it? Didn't nobody shoot you walking down the street, mug you in the park, amen? Didn't nobody kidnap your children? It ain't that bad, amen? And the folks started looking at Lazarus and said, everything ain't good in my life, but it ain't that bad, amen? I'm going through a few troubles, but I ain't dead, amen? We done got our house repossessed. We done lost the car, but it ain't, we ain't dead. It ain't that bad. Am I right about it? Come on here, man. They laid me off. They fired me. They downsized my job. But when I look at Lazarus, it ain't that bad. Are y'all with me? I'm still breathing. Praise God. My eyes are still blinking. Hallelujah. My heart is still beating. Amen. This is your reason to shout. Because if you're still breathing and your eyes are still blinking and your heart is still beating, it's a sign that God ain't through blessing. Amen. I got to tell you, you ain't finished, baby. You ain't done. Shake that thing off and say, I ain't through, amen. And if Jesus could do that for Lazarus, you ought to get a little excited. Just think what he can do for you, amen. You ain't got to be raised from the dead. You just need another job. You ain't got to be raised from the dead. You just need your blood pressure regulated. You ain't got to be raised from the dead. You just need your child to come back home. You ain't got to be raised from the dead. You just need to pay these bills off, amen. Look at your neighbor and say, if he did it for him, I know he can do something. Now you need to tell somebody, BJ, it ain't that. It ain't that bad. Thank you, Lord. 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 Then when I look at what he done done for you, Thank you Lord. and I see what he done done for you, and I see what he done done for you, see you hating because God done delivered some folk up in here. You upset because he done brought them into they do season. Talk to me. You mad because they got the hat you will Come on, Mama Jesse. That's the hat some of them wanted to get, and you got it first, amen. But, but let me tell you something. Don't ever get upset when God is blessing your neighbor. Because when you can look down the road and see God blessing your neighbor, get happy because he in the neighborhood, amen. Get yourself in order. Get yourself in line. You'll see some maybe next, amen. Thank God he's blessing my neighbor because it's a sign he in my neighbor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Got to go, y'all. Doorbell rang yesterday. The doorbell rang yesterday. Thank you. Went out to the door. Saturday morning. Y'all know who at the door. It's the Jehovah Witnesses. I don't say be quiet and ignore them. They'll go away. I opened up the door and said, hallelujah, you're, real. you're ready to share today. They was excited just like me and said, yes, we are. But then notice this, notice this, Dwayne. Here comes a little soldier from the back. The representative, Cindy, he's 10 years old. And he whips out not his New World Translation Bible. This modern day crystal, this modern day. You know what he whipped out? He whipped out his iPhone. <laughs> he says, I got a message for you. I said, well, let it roll, amen. So he lets the message roll and shows you all the pictures of doom and gloom and sadness and sorrow. You know, the violence in the world, the terrorism in the world, the folk who are sick and afflicted, amen. They start showing you the poverty and folk destitute in foreign lands, no water to drink and food to eat. And the question is, I keep asking, is God around? Does God know? Can God help? 
And then the, 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 his little movie ends, and he looks at me and says, did you get the message? <laughs> and I, before I could say yes, he says, because if you didn't get the message, our hall is around the corner on Slauson, and you can come. You can go to jwsomething.org. Or better yet, give me your name, and we'll have somebody come do Bible study with you. Looked at a little, his name was Brandon, and said, is that it, Brandon? He looked at me like it was it. The other two ladies with him looked like it was it. I said, well, you can't leave me there. Because if you leave me there, you'd have messed up my whole day. Because you didn't show me, Brandon, this, I'm t you know, I'm telling the young brother. I didn't tell him I was Reverend Green, pastor and all that. I, I just came to, I, I said, if, if you, you, you don't just show me people, a, a man that, a man are afflicted, a man. You, you show me, a man that, a man, you show me folk who are perishing. And I met Brandon, folk are perishing right in the eyesight of God. I said, I, I don't know what, what, what your Bible says, but she got one here. Let Brandon look at your Bible. He may not find this on his iPad, amen. But I said, turn over there, amen, to 2 Timothy 3 and 9, amen. And I said, the word of God says that God is not slack concerning his promise has some men count slackness, but he's given us a little time of mercy. He's given us a little more time of grace because God is not willing that anyone, I said anyone, should perish, amen, but that all would come to repentance. I said, Brandon, do you know what repentance is? He said, huh? I said, this is repentance, Brandon. If you were to walk to the end of the sidewalk, and I screamed back at you, said, Brandon, and you turned around and looked at me, and I had a cup of milk and a tray of cookies, and I said, come back and get it, and you didn't ignore me and kept going down the street, but you turned around and you came back and got my milk and cookies, amen. That's repentance, Brandon, amen. I said, that's the message you and I got to get out to these folk, amen, that God doesn't just have something good for us all. Look at somebody say, God's got something great for us all, amen. And he calling folk to come back and get it, amen. But they minds are so mixed up, they don't want to turn around. Their natures are so messed up, they don't want to turn around. Y'all ain't talking to me, amen. Amen, they've been twisted by the strange folk talking in their ears, amen. And they don't want to turn around. I said, but Brandon, we can't leave them there either, amen. Go over there. Do you have John in your Bible, Brandon? Because if you go to John 3, 16, the Bible says, for God so loved, amen. I said, Brandon, do you know about so love, amen? Love loves so even when it shouldn't be so, so it can be so. I said, God's got so so love, amen. Because they'll call us liars and God will say so. They'll tell them we're thieves, amen, and God will say so, amen. They'll tell them, amen, we're, amen, hormone and everything else, and God will say so, amen. They'll tell them we low down no good, dirty, rotten scoundrels, and God will say so, amen. Because God so loved the world, he gave his one only begotten son, Brandon, that who said Whoever believeth in him would not perish, amen, but he would have everlasting life, amen. I said, Brandon, you got to understand in creation, God chose everybody, but in eternity, if you're going to heaven, you got to choose God, amen. And he told me to tell you, Brandon, he's got more room than for 144,000. Y'all ain't heard me, amen. He got room for the black man. He got room for the white man. He got 
room for the rich and poor. He got room for the good and bad. Come on, talk to me. He got room for the homosexual and heterosexual. Tell your neighbor, you just got to turn around, amen. And I said, Brandon, we got to give them a reason to believe, amen. Because we can't just knock on their doors and show them a, new, a little movie, amen. We got to show ourselves off, amen. We got to tell them our God is good and great and we want his great things, amen. You got to tell somebody, I'm the one he woke up this morning. I'm the one he started on my way. I'm the one he's been keeping alive, amen. I'm the one he put food on, y'all ain't gonna preach with me. I'm the one he put food on my table. I'm the one he healed from leprosy and cancer, amen. I should have been dead and done, but the Lord gave me another chance, amen. I'm the one whose children had run away, and now they come back home, amen. I'm the one they counted out and never said was going to get back up. But look at me, y'all. I don't look like, I said I don't look like what I've been going through, amen. If you knew my testimony, you would know the reason I'm shouting glory if you really knew my story, amen. If you knew what he brought me from it, what he brought me through it, what he brought me over, and what he brought me out of, you wouldn't look at me shout. You would join hands with me and shout. Tell y'all I didn't want to get all excited. A reason to believe. When folk look at you, they ought to have a reason to believe. When they hear about your story, Calvin, and what God been keeping you through, you give them a reason to. When they look at you, Lucius, amen, and know where you were and look at where you are, we ought to give them a... Because it ain't no secret what God will do. Look around, if he done done that thing for other folk, Start letting, telling yourself he can do the same thing for you. If you trust and never doubt, God can bring you out. If you put your faith in God, God will never let you down. Y'all make me want to go old school, but you ought to tell somebody, can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody. I ain't gonna hoop and holler and run down out, but can't nobody. Do you like the Lord? Somebody know I'm right, you were sick, but you don't tell somebody, can't nobody heal you like Jesus? Can't nobody heal you like this. You were in trouble, amen, but they'll give your testimony. Can't nobody deliver you like Jesus? Can't nobody deliver you. You didn't have nothing, but can't nobody provide for you like Jesus? Tell your neighbor, can't nobody provide for you like the. And the only reason I'm in the house today is because God blessed me in my yester. If he hadn't blessed me in my yesterday, I wouldn't be up in this house today. And somebody needs God to bless them in their today so they can look forward to a blessed day tomorrow. Can they look at you, you and you and you and me too, and we give them a reason to believe? A reason to believe. Because if you and I are walking around here all sad, miserable, broke, busted, disgusted, deflated, Don't nobody want to come to no pity party. Folk want to come to a praise. I can stay home and look sad. I can stay home and look mad. Came down here because I heard Jesus wasn't the only one here. I heard you blessed folk were here. The ones that had been healed the ones who had been delivered, the ones who had been set free. I heard that there was somebody in this house that was dead and the Lord resurrected them. 
the Lord restore them and return them back to their life, amen. I heard there was somebody here who had been crossed off, counted out, and given up for dead. And the Lord has now raised you back up. I will bless the Lord at all times. I bless him in the morning. I bless him in the noonday. I bless him at night. I bless him when I get up. I bless him when I lay down. I bless God when I go out. I bless God when I come back in. Did you know it's a blessing when you have a place to sit down? But you ought to bless him if you're able to stand back up, amen. I bless him in all. His praise will continually be from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. His name is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let's exalt his name together for the Lord is good and the Lord is great and he ought to be greatly they saw that because of Lazarus, many folk were coming from the outside and they started coming inside. Folk who were not believing, they start believing. Folk who didn't trust and even know God came to trust and know God, not because of God, but because of the people of God. And they didn't want to just kill Lazarus them folk moved up to the top of the devil's hit list. They wanted to kill him also. Why? Because he was interrupting the social system and structure that had been set up by Satan to keep folk bound. Did you hear me? The social structure system that was set up by Satan to keep folk bound. Said the devil knows he only got a little more time. He's trying to catch and trap as many folk as he. And when you look at what's on the ballot, when you look at the measures, when you look at the propositions, when you look at the candidates, these folk ain't bringing no liberty. These folk are bringing a new form of slavery. Amen. And it's you and me. I know it looked like we're in the minority. But in the beginning, it was just 120 of them against the world. And that 120 turned into 3,000, and that 3,000 turned into another 3,000. And then that 3,000 turned into some more. In fact, that's how you and I get up in here. Amen. Somebody gave us a reason to believe. When they look at us, when they listen to us, when they see us, do we give them a reason to believe? Or do we turn them off and give them a reason not to believe? That's why I don't go to church. That's why I don't put, give my money to no preacher and all that other crazy stuff. Because it ain't working for them. Look at them. They worse than us. Look at their children, amen. They worse than ours. Look at what happened to them, amen. And they don't even know we're in position to be resurrected, restored, and returned. But they need to look at us. And they need to want to be like us. Because if the Lord don't help us, do you think Trump will? Do you think Hillary will? Do you think Proposition 54 and 65 going to help you? Y'all ain't talking to me. 
They outnumber us, but God is for us. And if God be for us, he more than any. Yep, they perishing right in front of us. Left side, right side, front and behind, over here, over there. And not the will of God. God has given the invitation. Folk need to respond and react and receive that invitation. And they'll be saved. I said they'll be saved. You, you still believe in salvation, right? If God woke you up this morning, he saved you from death. Once again, if you didn't have to dig in the trash for no food, he saved you from starving and malnutrition. If you had a roof over your head, I don't care if all five of y'all was in a bachelor apartment, he saved y'all from being homeless. Thank God for what he's already done. And you'll trust God for what he's doing and gonna do in your life. Why? You God's poster child. Come on here, I said, you God's, he wanna show you off. Because if he can't show you off, who can he show? And if you're in that situation, you're in that trouble, you're in that problem, you're the best candidate for God to do something great in your life so that others can see his goodness and greatness to you they'll start trusting to see his goodness and graces for them a reason to believe come on get on your feet get on your feet our God reigns yeah he reigns Come on, let's lift your hands. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you. With majesty. And young. You. Come on, you got to sing it out. Power. Say, my God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign. Don't matter who's in the White House. My God reigns. Don't matter what propositions pass. Lord, you reign. With power and majesty. Dominion. Oh, don't let the world get you down. Sing it with some joy, with power and majesty. ministers to us, ministers not just to us right where we are, but where God is leading us to be. Because God's blessing is not just being sent to you for you. God's blessing is being sent to us to be sent through us. Somebody doesn't just need to see and hear our word. They need to see our God work. Amen. And what better work, amen, can God display unto an unbelieving world than you and I? Folk ought to see us, amen. They don't see us stressed. They see us blessed. They don't see 
see us dwelling on the bottom. They see God leading us to the top, amen. They don't see us, amen, in lack, amen. They see us in prosperity, in health, in wealth, amen. They see, amen, the goodness of God, the greatness of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, the grace and favor of God. Because God wants us to give them what? A reason to believe. The text says many folk came to believe when they saw Lazarus. I'm telling you what kind of ministry and church God sets up here, people of God. It's the miracle center. It's the miracle center. Because when you walk into the miracle center, you see a bunch of miracles. You see for yourself God has healed God has delivered God has provided God has protected God has restored God has revived and returned and renewed and the reason why it's the miracle center because look closely the master's in the center whenever the master is in the center there'll always be a miracle right in the center you don't believe me, let him take hold of your life. Let him take hold of your home and your family. Let him reign on your job and young folk in your school and just start making the master the center and watch how many miracles show up in the center. Here's the bowed eyes are closed and saints to pray because somebody in this house may not even know the Lord for themselves. Don't have a right relationship with him where you can say above others that he's more than just God, Lord and Savior. I can personally declare and decree he's my God, he's my Lord, he's my Savior. Why, amen? Because A, B, C, I accepted him, A, I believe in him, B, and I confessed him, C. That's what it takes, amen. That's all. I know some folks say you got to wait, you got to tarry, you got to phone, and you got to go in the back and on. No, right where you are, as simple as A, B, and C. If you just ask God to come into your life, if you believe on the Lord, amen, pardon your sins, amen. If you call upon him, the Bible says, whosoever calls upon him shall be, will be, and can be saved. Let me assure you this, amen, if you do the A, B, and C, D, God can do the rest. God can't do the rest because many of y'all ain't asked him to do it. God can't do the rest that you can't do because many of y'all don't believe he can do it. God can't do the rest, come on, because you haven't called and confessed him for your. But right where you are, no matter who you are, good, not good, straight, not straight, up, not up, fix, not fix, if you just... Ask, believe, and call. Watch what God does. Watch what God. Some of y'all don't have no church home. You come to church, but you ain't connected to the church. You're not committed. Let, let me tell you what's that like. That, that's like going to the gym and watching everybody work out and just sit there and wondering why you ain't losing weight and gaining muscle. When you just come to church, when you just come and you don't commit and connect, to the church, to the membership, to the discipleship, to the stewardship, to the fellowship. It's like, it's like going to school, amen. And you never study, you never pass no exams, amen. You never do no homework. And you're wondering why everybody graduating and you being left behind because you're just showing up. But you're not committing to and connecting to that which you show up for. Somebody is saying to me, well, Pastor, I'm at church all the time. Once, twice, three, four times a week, and it ain't getting better. Have you done what God has told you to do to get better? God done told some of y'all, just start praying more. God done told y'all to forgive some folk and watch what he does for you. God has told some of us, amen, just get a quiet time and shut the phone off and cut the TV off, TV, amen, and tape it, amen, and catch up with it later. And many of us can't let go and we won't let God, amen. And who in this house don't need no help from the Lord? Who don't need no help from the Lord? Everybody needs some kind of help. 
Might be personal help, might be physical help, financial help, mental help, relational help. I need some help because it's not bad to need help. You know what's bad? If you really need some help, you don't get the help that you really need. Hallelujah. You don't get the help you really need. And who better than God knows the help that you really need? Uh, Y'all call me, you text me, and you send notes, and you say, Pastor, I need some help because I need this to change. I need that to change. I need them to change. You want them to change people. You want them to change places in your life. Some of y'all want God to change some things in your life. And he told me to give you this word. He wasn't going to change the things for you. He going to change you for the things. Some people ain't going to change. They're going to be worse than they were yesterday. They're going to be worse today. Some things, amen, that was happening in your life that got you down last week, if you let them, they're going to get you down this week. Some places, amen, and all the rest of it, amen, you just saying, well, why God won't change the people? And why God won't change the places? And why won't, you know why? Because he's changing you. He's changing you. He's changing you. He's disconnecting some buttons in your life that folk knew they could push to aggravate you, to discourage and depress you, amen, disappoint you. And they're going to keep pushing the button, but the button ain't going to work no more. So this time, instead of crying, you're going to start smiling. Instead of cussing, you're going to start blessing, amen. Instead of stressing, amen, you Hallelujah. Then somebody needs divine direction. Two things you probably know. Don't you know where you've been and where you are? Guess what? Don't none of us know. Even the smartest person in here. Don't none of us know where we're going. We need God to order our steps. We need God to point it out and make it plain. Crystal clear. Is this what I'm supposed to do? Because many of us, if not all of us, we can't afford to make any mistakes right now. Any, I'm, I ain't talking about big ones. I'm talking about even little ones. Mm-mm. I, and you're sure. I know you're sure because you feel it, amen. And you just know that you know. But you know what? You better let God confirm that for you right now. Amen. I tell folk all the time. I tell my children. This ladder of success to get to the top, you got to take it step by step, wrong by wrong. And I said, you know what? It's going to take a lot of steps to the top. But just keep stepping, keep climbing, you'll get there. But know this. Take a lot of steps to get to the top. It only take one misstep to fall back to the bottom. One. You can't afford to make that one misstep right now. So whatever it is today, you, you don't have a right relationship with the Lord. You know one word, come. God leads you to be a part of this church and ministry, amen. Don't be afraid of shame. One word, come. I don't care who think they know about your situation, think they know what you're dealing with and facing, and you down here, you need some help, amen. One word, come. You want God to point it out and make it plain and clear. One word, y'all. Come. Let me help somebody. You don't have to figure this thing out for God to work this thing out in your life. You know what you need to do? You need to just trust God in. Come. That's it. Lift your head. Lift your head. Lift your head. Going to pray with and pray for these who come. Different folk, different reasons. But know this, the same God who's above us all is the same God who can help us all. That's what I need y'all to do down here. Touch somebody. Lean on them. Amen. Hug them if they let you. Amen. Just somehow touch them that we got a divine connection one with another down here. And, and you probably know why you came down here, right? Okay. For the one next to you, whoever they are, whether you know them or don't know them, I want you to start praying for them like you pray for yourself. So you want God to save you. Ask God to save him, her. The young one, the older one, amen. You need God to lead you. Ask God to lead your brother and sister, this young man, this young lady, amen. You need God to do something in your home. Start praying that God does something in their home, amen. That way, two or three of us, we're touching, we're agreeing, which brings God into the midst to not just hear us when we pray, but help us as we pray.
Those of y'all in the audience, don't, don't just stand there and look. Stretch your hand this way and, and pray this simple prayer. God, supply the needs of those people. That, that, that's a simple prayer. God, supply the needs of these, those people. Why? Because they're down here right now. Who's to say you won't be down here next? And you have sown the seed that God will supply the needs of other people, which will touch people that God will touch to pray that your needs will be supplied as well. God in heaven, we thank you as we have, amen, extended your invitation. And these are they who have come. These are they who have responded. Before they came, God, you knew it was going to be on 9-11, God, that they would come. And not only now do you see their need, but God, I know your desire is to supply even more than they need. However you do it, God, through the word, through the Holy Spirit, through the church, through a believer, God, you can take a circumstance, situation, condition in their life to grow them in grace and in the knowledge of you. We pray, God, and stand that a hedge of protection is around their heart, their spirit, their mind, their eyes and ears, that the enemies of this world will not, shall not, cannot steal, kill, nor destroy as you prosper and increase these folk day by day, time after time. This is only the beginning, God, because they took the step to come. And I know, God, because you helped them take this step, you're going to help them take the next step and the next step and the next and we thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, give God a hand of praise. No, that ain't big enough. Give God a hand of praise up in here. A reason to believe. Quit all that grumbling, mumbling, complaining. Give folk a reason to believe. Don't hold your head down. Hold your head up. Give them a reason to believe. Even when it's not sunshine, but it's rain, amen. Lift your hands up and tell, tell the Lord, hallelujah, in it high. A reason to believe, amen. Trouble don't last all the ways, amen. Weeping may endure for a night, but if you trust God, joy will come in the morning. A reason to believe, amen. Hallelujah. How many of y'all glad God woke you up and brought you to church today? About 20 of y'all, all right. We'll pray for the rest of y'all in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, amen. All right, we're going to worship the Lord in giving, y'all. Come on, amen. We're going to worship the Lord in giving. Amen, because it's a part of worship, amen. This is the part of worship, amen. I let God really know he can trust me. Hallelujah, amen, because throughout the service, he's been telling me to trust him, amen. But this is the part where God lets, but I let God know because... What he done put in my hand, a portion of it that he's asking for, I'm going to put it back in his hand. Did you know me and God would have never got the message about the recession if you didn't tell us? Amen. We never would have known because the more he gave to me, the more I give back to him. And the more I give back to him, the more he give back to me. And we never experienced recession because he don't run out. And he makes sure I, can you keep playing? Are you with me? Okay. Amen. We don't run out. Amen. So if some of y'all didn't tell us about recession and being broke, we would have never knew what recession and broke was about. Amen. I got rain still. I got rain still. He still rains. Amen. Amen. We're making ready to go. Amen. As we make ready. Amen. We got visitors in the house, praise God, today. Amen. Y'all don't mind standing, waving your hand. We want to acknowledge you. Amen. Applaud you. We appreciate you. Come on, give them a real big hand. Amen. 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 I've known them for a little while. We're glad y'all came to worship with us today. Amen. Opportunity presents itself again. You look like you want to say something. You want to say something? Amen. Come on. <laughs> Come on. You want to say something, Pam? Let God bless you. Amen. Just glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. 
Hallelujah. Give her a real big hand. You know, you know she got the love of God in her. Because she claimed publicly Aaron is her friend. Amen. Amen. So that's the Amen. See there? That's that soul love we were talking about. That soul love. Amen. Amen. And then the Rosses, they, they know me since I was a little boy. Amen. Amen. So we're glad to have them. I'm glad to have y'all in the house too. Amen. I want y'all, amen, say Pastor just gushing over the visitors. I'm glad to see y'all too. Amen. Jeez. Amen. Tuesday, Wednesday morning, we're on the prayer line, 6 a.m. sharp, y'all. Amen. Y'all need to join us, those of y'all who haven't reached out and tell someone. Our ushers, they have the information that you can call and connect with us as well as uh, Tuesday night, amen, the word line, 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. People are calling in from all over the world, even outside of the country, amen. Uh, my good friend, Pastor Rama Lane, he's been, amen, recently calling all the way from South Africa, amen. And if they can call in from South Africa, we'll stop in front of y'all from Southern California, amen. Amen, amen. Uh, Cameron, hold these shirts up right quick, amen. Amen. The I love my church shirts, amen. Today's your last day if you want one of these. Okay, you're going to come on up. Take the green one. Let me have the blue one. All right. Hold it over there. Hold it over there. I love my church. The stop. See, very green pastor, amen. Okay, it don't matter if you want blue or green. We're not going to segregate. So if you do... See, Sister Scott, the one that's talking about blue winning and all that other stuff back there. Hear me today, today, the last day to order and pay. We're looking to put them on on the fourth Sunday, our dress down casual day. Is that all right, y'all? Amen, amen. All right, come on and stand, hug somebody. Tell your neighbor, I love you more leaving than I did coming, amen. I love you more leaving than I did coming, amen. Yeah. <laughs> <Woo. laughs> Come on, lift your gifts to the Lord, amen. Let's pray in Jesus' name. God in heaven, we thank you. We praise you for bringing us here. God, we praise and bless you for blessing us here. God, no matter how we came today, we don't leave the same. We leave this place covered with your mercy and grace. Angels in charge, God, the blood is applied. No weapon formed against us prospering. It is in you, through you, and because of you, we realize and recognize and receive. We are more than conquerors. God, thank you for family and friends that you have brought from far and near so you could bless us all here. God. We release the seed in need of our lives, God, into your hands. Increase these seeds, God, to accomplish more. Decrease and take away these needs that they do no more. The good measure, pressed down, shaken together, that runs over, above, and beyond expectation and worldly limitation, God, is received by your people in Jesus' name. God, once again, we want to say hallelujah. Bless you, God, for blessing us, God, to be a blessing to others, God. And it's in your mighty, marvelous, magnificent, merciful, matchless, majestic name we pray. Today we praise and prevail. Jesus' name, let the people of God say amen. Amen, amen. I would be remiss, I forgot to tell everybody, to the grandparents today. Today is National Grandparent Day. Happy Grandparents Day to all grandparents. Amen. I pray you enjoy your day, and it's a blessed day. Jesus' name. God bless you all. Amen.